Courtney, what did you do? Hey there guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Courtney and normally I really enjoy using tips and tricks from the Curly Girl Method to improve the health of my hair and yeah, my hair doesn't normally look like this. Normally my hair looks like this or like that. But today's video, I'm gonna be showing you my best tips and tricks for how to style your hair straight in the most effective way possible to minimize damage so that your hair can bounce back to its wavy curly self. If you enjoy learning about hair and basically all things hair, you might want to go ahead and subscribe and click that notification bell to stick around for some more videos because I definitely have a bunch coming your way very soon. If this video is helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up. It does help me out and it lets me know that the video accomplished its purpose in that it was actually helpful because that's why I'm here. I want to help you guys so much. Like seriously, that's my whole goal. I want you to love the hair that grows out of your head. Ironic I'm saying that in this video because I'm like altering my, my wave pattern in this video. But still, I want you to love the hair that you have. Real quick, I do wanna address the metaphorical elephant in the room by talking about this little guy right here. In a previous video on this channel, I did an all drugstore wavy hair routine. And my goal was to use all products from the drugstore that are under $10 that are curly gold approved to wash and style my hair with. And you know, with this aim in mind, I trooped into Target, toddler and all, wearing masks, being safe, practicing social distancing, and I started reading ingredients labels like crazy on the aisle at Target. Yes, I know there are apps that will scan the label for you and tell you if the product is Curly Girl approved or not, but I, I didn't have the app downloaded on my phone and I wasn't going to sit there and copy and paste ingredients into is it cg.com, which is what I normally like to do. I thought that I could just read the ingredients labels and be done. <laughs> so I, I read the ingredients on this lovely shampoo and the conditioner does state on there silicone free which kind of clued me in that the conditioner would be curly girl approved and when i read this my brain completely skipped over the second ingredient which is sodium laurel sulfate whoops courtney made a curly girl boo boo i do that on rare occasion and my only excuse is that every time I looked down, my mask would slide up into my eyes. I couldn't really see. I was trying to keep my toddler from sniffing every shampoo bottle because that's what he loves to do. He loves to smell things because they smell pretty. Anyway, <laughs> I just missed it. It was my fault. I do plan on trying to find more products from the drugstore that are Curly Girl approved. All that being said, this is a fantastic product. It did not wildly strip my hair, which is why I wasn't clued in to it containing a sulfate the moment I put it on my hair. I think that this is gonna be a great substitute for the Suave Clarifying Shampoo. Recently, Suave changed their formula and it's no longer the same formula as it was. And so it's really hard to find a basic, inexpensive clarifier. So this will be a beautiful clarifier to use right before I deep condition. I personally don't think sulfates are the worst thing in the world. If I had to make a boo-boo, I prefer to make a boo-boo using something with sulfates or maybe a little bit of drying alcohol versus a silicone. My hair just hates silicones, guys, like really hates it. But anyway, if you have a drier hair type, you may choose to make boo-boos using silicones versus the sulfate because the sulfate may be death to your hair. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know that this is not Curly Girl approved and that I messed up and I'm gonna continue on the hunt for a really good, affordable low poo. All right, now that I've talked about that for a few minutes, let's talk about what I did today and why on earth I straightened my hair. <gasps> Gasp, oh my goodness. I haven't said gasp in a long time. 
I have notes because I feel like this is a touchy subject and a little bit of a complicated issue, so I wanted to make sure I hit all the points. So if I'm not looking at you, I'm sorry. It's because I'm reading my notes. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Just because you start the Curly Girl Method, does it mean you are never, ever, 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 ever going to wear your hair straight again? No. Are you failing at life for wearing your hair straight every once in a blue moon? I don't think so. <laughs> If you wear your hair straight, does that mean you loathe your wavy curly hair and you're rejecting embracing the hair that you were fearfully and wonderfully made with? I don't think so. That's not how I feel anyway. So what are some of the reasons that you might straighten your hair occasionally? Well, there's several. First off, you could be doing a hashtag length check. And that's not a real big factor for me because I don't have a whole bunch of shrinkage, but if your curls really do like shrink up a lot, it can be fun sometimes to very carefully and gently, with all the tips and tricks I'm showing you in this video, wear your hair straight to see how much it's grown. Another reason that you might, on occasion, wear your hair straight, well, time restrictions. In some instances, it can kind of take a long time to style your wavy curly hair. And if you are really fast, you can actually do this routine maybe a little bit faster than styling wavy curly hair. I'm not sure it actually saves you that much time in the long run. I find that when I do, on a very rare occasion, style my hair straight, the grease and the oil from my scalp travels through my hair a whole lot faster. I feel like my hair gets greasier so, so quick and so like, I may have saved time on the day I washed my hair, but I'm gonna have to wash my hair the next day because it's gonna be a greasy, disgusting mess unless I use half a bottle of dry shampoo with drying alcohols or my lovely My Hair Dance dry shampoo. But anyway, you get the point what I'm saying. The wash day doesn't last as long as when I style it wavy curly. And the last reason you might want to wear your hair straight on the very rare occasion is that it can be fun to switch things up every once in a while. I've gotta say, I did wear my hair like this today and my sweet husband <laughs> saw me and went, "Oh, you're wearing your hair straight. I miss your curls. <laughs> and you know what? I miss them too. Wearing my hair straight every once in a while does allow me the opportunity to appreciate how much healthier my hair has become, how much better it tolerates being blow dried straight and it gives me a second to miss my waves and curls. So another question you may be asking yourself is, does wearing your hair straight ruin your waves and curls? Doesn't it undo all your progress? And my answer to that is it might. It depends on how long you've been doing the curly girl method. If you've been doing the curly girl method for a week and your waves and curls are extremely fragile and not really clumping up together and your hair really isn't in the optimum healthy state, yeah, if you were to blow dry your hair straight like this, you might take a few steps backwards. I have found that it took my hair a year to a year and a half for me to be able to wear it straight on the very rare occasion without it suffering consequences. I think I did the curly girl method for three months and then blue dry it straight and really didn't like what it did to my hair. It kind of set me back pretty far. My hair freaked out and quit clumping together and quit springing up as curly at around the three month mark. And then I just didn't get the hankering to straighten my hair. Wow, my Texas is showing. <laughs> you may not cancel me for wearing my hair straight, but you may cancel me for saying hankering. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I didn't get the urge to straighten my hair until after a year of doing the curly girl method. And then I really noticed that my hair didn't freak out. So I maybe will do this once a month at the very most. When was the last time I did this? Oh, it was three months ago. Okay, apparently I don't do it that often. You get the point. Very rarely, it's not that big a deal. So if your hair is fully transitioned, your hair is really, really healthy, it's going to tolerate this a lot better than if your hair is not super healthy, not in its optimal state, it's, it's gonna take a beating if you do this. So there's my word of 
warning and caution there. Also, there are things you can do when you do this routine that I'll talk about in a minute when I show you what I do that will minimize the amount of damage that you're doing to your hair while blow drying it straight that are gonna give you really nice, smooth, hydrated, optimum results and going to set you up for your curls to bounce right back when you're ready to style your wavy curly hair again. All right, let me show you what I did. Alrighty, here I am with freshly washed hair. I don't do this very often, so I don't know exactly which the best shampoo and conditioner is for this routine, but I've noticed that my hair does better when I tend to gravitate towards things that are more nourishing and moisturizing. So I did co-wash today in condition with the GVP conditioning balm. I believe it's the Sally's dupe for the Matrix Biolodge Hydra Source Conditioner. <laughs> and then I did put in just a tiny bit of the Not Your Mother's Leave-In, the one in the yellow bottle that has the spray nozzle. That's what I prepped my hair with and I threw it up in my perfect hair care towel for it to dry just a little bit. I don't wanna leave this on too long. I don't want too much of the moisture to be pulled out of my hair because I'm about to do a very important step. But you will notice that up until this point, I have been following the Curly Girl method. I've been using Curly Girl approved products. I'm using my microfiber towel. All is well in my curly hair world. Now, because I will be using this Revlon volumizing hair styler dryer thing, it's got a really long name, but since I'm using this, and I will be clicking on the heat and then turning it back to cool and clicking on the heat and turning it back to cool. I do want to put a heat protectant in my hair and it is very hard to find heat protectants that don't have silicones in them. And in case you haven't watched the Curly Girl Rules I Break video that I made a while back, you will know that I tend to sometimes brush my hair. I do tend to sometimes use a sulfate to deep condition with. On the very rare occasion, I will use a drying alcohol, but where I draw the line in the curly girl sand is at silicones. That is just one ingredient that my hair wildly rejects. So I've been on the hunt for a long time for a curly girl approved heat protectant, and I found not one, but two. Also, if you have a favorite heat protectant that has silicones in it, and your hair doesn't loathe silicones with a burning passion, feel free at this step to apply your silicone laden heat protectant. But here are the silicone free ones I found that are Curly Girl approved. The Briogeo Farewell Frizz Blow Dry Perfection and Heat Protectant Cream and both the leave-ins from Evolve are heat protectants and UV protectants as well. Today I'm going to be using the Smart Curl Leave-In Conditioner from Evolve and the Briogeo Farewell. You could do either of these separately, but I'm doubling up the goodness. So this is how I apply them to my hair. You'll notice I didn't plop my hair in my towel. I just wrapped it up as per traditional toweling. <laughs> is that what that's called? Toweling your hair? First up, I'm gonna be going in with the Evolve spray and it's really fine mist. And I'm just gonna start running that through my hair with my fingers. I like using my fingers first instead of going straight in with the brush and start brushing it through my hair because I can actually feel all the places I hit with the product and I can tell if I missed any spots because I'm actually touching my hair with my fingers. Man, I got a pretty even application there. Go me. <laughs> then I'm going to be grabbing just a smidge of the blow dry cream from Briogeo. If your hair is a little bit more coarse, you can lean in a little bit harder on the amount of heat protectant that you use, especially this cream. This cream is really good but it's very concentrated, so I don't grab very much. 
and I'm mainly focusing this on the mid lengths to ends, but I am going ahead and taking just the slightest little bit all the way up to the roots. I find that it doesn't weigh my hair down, which is nice. <laughs> so goofy. I'm rubbing the excess off on my towel. All right, now that my hair has no knots in it and I'm 100% sure that I got a very smooth distribution, I will go ahead and brush it through just for extra insurance that I didn't miss any spots. In case I missed a couple spots with my fingers, the brush will finish distributing the product. I feel like I'm contradicting myself, but this makes sense in Courtney's brain. <laughs> Comment down below, is Courtney making sense? <laughs> Probably not. Oh my goodness. I'm in a mood. A mood where I'm like a little bit sleepy and tired and feeling goofy because of that. All right. Does anybody else get super goofy when they're a little bit sleepy and tired? <laughs> Just me. All right. Now that I've got that worked through my hair and I'm looking like, who is that? Draco Malfoy <laughs> with the hair slicked back. And the long hair? No, what was his dad's name? Lucius. I look like Lucius Malfoy a little bit from the Harry Potter movies. <laughs> I am going to section off my hair so that working in smaller amounts will give me less hair to work with and make my life easier. So I think. And my hands are slippery. And I'm gonna throw the clip. It's gonna go everywhere. <sighs> no, it's not. All right. Now, going in with this tool, you could 100% use a round brush and your blow dryer, and you could use like cool heat on your blow dryer for better insurance. Unfortunately, this has a cool setting, but it's like, I need warm. <laughs> I don't need burning hot, and I need cool, like, I need somewhere in between burning hot and ice cold. And this does not have that setting, so I kind of alternate it between hot and cold. But if you're using a blow dryer with a round brush, you have more control and more options over your heat settings. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So you can totally see that I'm really focusing the most on the roots. And the reason I really love this is that I feel like I can get really good and close to the roots and really lift and get some good volume happening. I think that's why everybody raves about this tool. And I did have it on high heat, then I would click it down to cool. And you noticed that I focused on the roots, but then kind of pulled it through my hair pretty quickly. I wasn't leaving it going through my hair super, super slow. And I definitely didn't blow fry the ends too much. The ends of your hair tend to be the most porous and kind of susceptible to heat damage. So focus your heat at the root where your hair is the lower porosity is gonna be better able to withstand the heat and then more quickly work your way through the ends. That's, in my mind, a more gentle way to do this process. I'm gonna do the other side and I'll be right back. My clipping job was not very good. It's falling down on me. <laughs> also, I forgot to mention that I 100% make sure to run through my hair with it on the cool setting until my hair is 100% cooled down. This also helps theoretically smooth that hair cuticle back down and set your hair when it's cooled down in the shape that you want. All right, now I'm gonna do the top section. Let's see, how good can Courtney maintain her sections? Not very. <laughs> I don't 
do this enough to be really good at knowing the sections of my hair. <laughs> stay, stay there. All right. Now I'm gonna start at the back and I'm really gonna focus on root lift right there. I do kind of hold it on my ends when it's on the cold setting. <laughs> Just wanted to point that out. Now I'm gonna dry that section and I'll be right back. <laughs> oh yeah, there's the volume. So to get this kind of volume, I did turn upside down for a minute and kind of really focus on brushing, lifting the roots up. Sometimes it's easier for me to reach this part of my head when I flip upside down. But anyway, there you go. Let's organize this a little bit because this is a little bit crazy. Come on here. Let's lay down in more of a normal fashion, shall we? We were rivaling Hermione volume at one point. Well, actually not really, but there we go. This is the final result. As you can see, things are looking okay. It's not perfectly, perfectly straight. There still are some pieces that have a little bend at the end, but I don't mind that. I actually think it's kind of cute. And over the course of the next couple of days, as I wear this wash day, the ends will slowly start to curl up. It's really cute. It's like my hair just wants to be curly now. I've talked a little bit about curl memory and that is literally your hair remembering its natural curl pattern. So my hair will try and curl up over the next few days. It's not gonna stay this straight for the next few days but I'm okay with that. Let me turn around and show you the back. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some really good tools in your arsenal of healthy hair. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to y'all later. Bye. Whoa. Oh, where'd my necklace go? Come back, necklace. Come, you're cute. Why am I fiddling with the hair? I like playing with it. Oh my goodness, it's so much fun to play with. Guys, I can run my fingers through my hair so much. It feels so good. This is one reason I do this on the very rare occasion in a blue moon. It just feels so nice. Yeah.